The youngest child we've rescued in this country was two years old. 34 men raped that two-year-old over a 36-day period. It took 30 plus surgeries for her just to be a woman, to, to urinate normally. She'll never be a mom. Evil, Jan, evil is real. Evil is real. And we turn a blind eye to this issue because it's sex and it's my body. And, you know, we're talking about pornography and what I do in private. And so it's so easy to hide because now you got a guy in the church involved in sex trafficking. Do you think that guy is going to tell his community, hey, I need help? No way. No way. Here's another stat. One child, not that I want to glorify this, but one child under, in the hands of a pimp will bring that pimp $250,000 a year tax-free. So if he traffics four girls, the guy's making a million dollars a year, tax-free, cash. Just how widespread is sex trafficking in America? Why is it so incredibly difficult for the victims to ever truly recover and have healthy relationships? How are sex trafficking and pornography connected? And what can we do to protect our children from sex trafficking? This is American Thought Leaders, and I'm Yanya Kelik. In this episode, we'll sit down with Yako Boyens. The brother of a sex trafficking survivor, Boyens is the founder of Share Together, which combats sex trafficking of children. He is also the producer and director of the feature film on the subject, Eight Days. Yako Boyens, wonderful to have you on American Thought Leaders. Jan, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for, for giving me some time. You know, you've had a very, very interesting life. I mean, just not, not to be overly glib. Um, uh, I, I, I'd love it if you could tell me how you became unfortunately interested in the issue of sex trafficking and that trajectory. I think it's, it's, a, it's a powerful story. Yeah. In 1994, I was a senior in high school, right, which dates me. But at that same time, my sister was 12 years old, we were raised without a father. So it's a mother and three kids, two boys. I'm the oldest. And my sister was sex trafficked in 1994, but she was trafficked for six years. Now the interesting thing is, she won a competition like American Idol in South Africa. The record label recorded the first album, put her on tour, and 12 months later, the president of the record label rapes her backstage and starts selling her for sex to industry. This is a corporate sex trafficking situation. So we are thrown into the situation of number one, our sister is gone, don't know, six years. Six years later, she comes back but the girl that came back is not the girl that left, of course, right? So the girl that, that came back is emotionally compromised, morally and physically and spiritually destroyed. So there's a suicide attempt. My mom says, look, we got to step in. We step in. We don't understand what's happening. Those who trafficked her pursued her after she was rescued. So my mom decides, look, we got to leave the country, immigrates to the United States. Naturally speaking, we're a tight family. Two brothers, we immigrate with her, right? And so we land in Nashville, Tennessee, 2001, three weeks after 9-11. But the story only starts there. We get here and we realize that the rehabilitation process for Ilonka, my sister, took 10 years. Now the life expectancy for children in America that sex trafficked is seven years. The suicide rate the is- The life expectancy. Expectancy is seven years. My sister had three suicides. Like since that, the events. From when they're trafficked, the life expectancy is seven years. Suicide, physical harm, death by, by force, overdosing, you no know, disease. It, it, is, it is epic, no pun intended, it is epic how prevalent this, this issue is in our country. Now, when I got to the US, I started realizing there's sex trafficking in Atlanta, Georgia. I was traveling. Nobody would listen. This is 2001. Okay, okay. So wow. 2007, we've got our eyes firmly on Epstein. Of course, he walks in 08. And so by 09, 010, we started saying, we need to engage. I married an amazing writer, a screenplay writer. She writes a book, and we produced a film later on called Eight Days. And we put our sights firmly on the American children. Now, we've worked in 56 countries around the world. So people ask me, Yaku, how did you learn about sex trafficking looking for my sister? 
for six years. Tell me, you know, when, I don't know if, I don't, I don't even know if I want to do this, but when you say she was sex trafficked for six years, what does that actually mean? Like, what is... Today what? in the United States, if a child is sex trafficked, it means that they will be sold for sex 10 to 20 times a day. By men, predominantly, 90% of the buyer is men. By men who want to pay for sex with minors. And, and, and Jan, let me share this with you. We're the number one country in the world commercializing sex with children, number one. There are other countries like Cambodia and the Middle East and India in the class system where it's allowed to happen under faith, religion, etc. right? But it's not commercialized. It's just, you know, in India, children are abused. We commercialize it in the United States. We've turned it into a $30 billion enterprise. Billion dollar enterprise. These American children that I want you to understand being sold in America. We're not even talking about girls from Russia, girls from Mexico. We can talk about the border. Do we need a border? Absolutely. But let's talk about that later. American kids being sold for sex in the United States of America, and it is aided and abetted 100%. The system knows. The system has always known. I thought I knew a lot about this issue, yeah. okay? I mean, I, I, at the moment, I don't even know how to respond to that. I mean, you're telling me that this intra-U.S. sex trafficking is a $30 billion a year industry. How many people are there? 76,000 kids trafficked per day in Texas. 76,000. Way over half a million U.S. We're talking about slavery at proportions like we've never seen in history. There are more slaves today than ever before. We MLK did an amazing work. We thought we abolished slavery. No way. A child that's being forced to have sex, a woman that's being forced to have sex, is a slave. We've got more slaves today. And this is not, by the way, an issue that you can profile. This thing is not a respecter of men. It doesn't respect race, class, gender. It's in every race. It's in every zip code. Every zip code. Every, it's in this building today. It is in, it's in your organization. It's in Fortune 500 companies. We have arrested the janitor, the CEO, the school principal, the police chief, the, the, the special operations agent. Why? Because it's sex. Sex is primal. There's only two things that's in every family in the world, sex and money. So only two things that's in every household. Faith is not in every household. Politics is not in every household. Sex is primal. So when you attack a child in a, in a primal state and you violate that primal instinct, you're thwarting everything. You're changing what they think of life, trust, self-respect, value, love, what sex is for. And sex, by the way, whether people want to believe this or not, there's a spiritual contract signed. God ordained husband and wife to come together and become one. You will leave the house of your mother and father and become one with your wife. So every time two people engage in a sexual act, there's a piece of you that's gone. You are forfeiting, you are giving a piece. Now, when you do this to a child, and then it's, it comes by force, fraud, or coercion, it's sex trafficking. So we've gone, for, for, for millennia, we've misappropriated prostitution. Like, what is prostitution? Prostitution, by definition, has to be 100% free will. Do you know that under 2% of the world's prostitution population is free will? So if that woman at 24, 25, 44 is on the street and she looks to you like a prostitute, but she was coerced as a 12-year-old, she's not a prostitute. She's a victim. She's a victim. Here's Corey Feldman. Here's Elijah Woods in Hollywood saying, hey, they raped me at 12. I'm so messed up, I can't even, I don't even know who I am today. I don't know love, I don't understand. Now these people go and get married. Now marriage is a wreck. So we have on our watch in this country allowed our children to become goods for sale. No question. And it permeates all sects. It's in the church, it's in the clergy, it's, it, it's, it's in the Catholic community, it's in the Baptist community. It is everywhere because it is sex. And it's men who make an agreement with a self-satisfying need and it 
It's a digression. It starts with pornography. And okay, it'll we, can, we can talk about that in yeah. a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's very, that's very yeah. interesting yeah. to me. And, and so, so here's a number for you. The average age of children sex trafficked in the United States is 12. It's the lowest average in the world. I can't, I don't even know how to but fathom it's, that. But it's by design. What happens, and there's women around us here, and I can ask any woman this question, and any woman in your life, you can ask, what happens to a woman between the age 12 and 15? Her body changes. But, but she matures. Her body yeah. changes. Mm -hmm. She's confused, number one. She doesn't know what's going on. She starts becoming aware of boys, right? Every girl realizes boys my age, I don't associate with. I like older boys. So the age is 12 because the predators online understand that if I go at a girl in that gap, 12 to 15, she's susceptible. She is already confused. If I come in as the one that I understand you, I'll listen to you. I see your dad is not home. I hear you. I see you. I'm, and he becomes Romeo and he coerces her and she falls in love. This is why so many women that are raped stand on the witness stand and defend the guy who's abusing her. Why? Because 100% they've been conditioned this is love. They've made an agreement. If you talk to my sister today, the second Ilanka got trafficked, she will tell you she made an agreement like, this is how I get worth. This affirms who I am. Look, it's, 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 you can break a human being like you break a horse. It's not hard. If I know your vulnerabilities and your desires, here's my sister, her desire is to be a recording artist, right? Her vulnerability is no father present, okay? That's a recipe for disaster for a skilled, seasoned pedophile professional to come in. They call it grooming, right? Grooming. Yeah. And give her her heart's desire, a record deal, legitimately, immediate trust, immediate rapport, father effect, no dad, I'm coming in, I'm your dad, I'm going to take care of you, and they take time, it's over. It is, here's another thing for you. We think it's the runaway, we think it's a child on the street, we think it's kids in the foster care system, which it is, so we can talk about foster care and CPS. The softest target today in the United States of America is a girl that lives at home with both parents at home because her radar is way down. She has no social awareness. And if the dad is not actively in her life, actively in her life, in a healthy way, affirming who she is as a young woman, bringing God into her life, helping her with her vision and her future, then she is a sitting duck because she's going to cry online for attention. She's going to cry for affirmation. She's going to look for counseling online. And the pedophile is sitting there saying, I'm here, baby. And he's in. It is that quick. Right? Unfortunately, the fastest rising trend in child sex trafficking, and we're talking about minors here in America, is parents trafficking their own children. What? Yep, fact. 100%. The financial gain is massive. One of the most recent girls we rescued, 13 years old, after her dad trafficked her for, for four years from when she was nine, to the school principal, the neighbor, co-workers, people in the community, right? How she do you finally, even find yeah. people that... Uh, uh, right? <laughs> it's so hard, Jan. She finally stands up to her dad one day, confronts him physically and says, no more. And he said, okay, this is how I'm putting you through college. I won't do it with you anymore. I'm going to do it to your younger sister. In a blink of an eye, she says, no, do it to me. They threatened to kill my mom. So my sister said, do it to me, leave my mom alone. So you turn a victim into a protector. This is why women get raped and wait for 32 years before they say anything. Talk to them. I've, I've sat like this across way too many rescued survivors who were victims. Too many. The youngest child we've rescued in this country was two years old. 34 men raped that two-year-old over a 36-day period. It took 30-plus surgeries for her just to be a woman, to, to urinate normally. She'll never be a mom. Evil, Jan, 
evil is real. Evil is real. And we turn a blind eye to this issue because it's sex and it's my body and, you know, talking about pornography and what I do in private. And so it's so easy to hide because now you got a guy in the church involved in sex trafficking. Do you think that guy is going to tell his community, hey, I need help? No way. No way. Here's another stat. One child, not that I want to glorify this, but one child under, in the hands of a pimp will bring that pimp $250,000 a year tax-free. So if he traffics four girls, the guy's making a million dollars a year tax-free, cash. This at, is a real problem. At the cost of your soul. and <laughs> This is a real problem. This is why you look at Epstein. Let me tell you, Epstein was going to be tried for the wrong crime again because this is what they do in this country. The district attorneys do plea deals. They bump it down to misdemeanors, okay? They don't give this guy, these guys the sentencing that they need. Epstein was going to be tried for exploiting and, and abusing two girls because two girls came and the court, 14 girls have come since, but the guy's dead. But there were two, right? He shouldn't have been tried for that. The guy should have been tried as a master sex trafficker with a network. His penalty should have been life. Right? It wasn't going to be. It was going to be another plea deal. Right. The industry. This is controversial, but the industry. And I'm on record. 14 days before he died, I said he's got 14 days to live because that's what I heard on the street. He died day 14. The industry could not allow the guy to stay because this time he was going to turn. It wasn't going to be 96 names that we have. It was going to be hundreds of names. This is, this is the fact. That is that. very controversial. It's, it's just, it's a fact. This thing bleeds into our markets. It bleeds into corporate America. It, like I told you, we've arrested all the following. School principals, recently a U.S. You know, a state senator, Conservative Senator, Philadelphia. Okay? This is not a left or a right issue. It's not a black or a white issue. It is evil because we've, we've turned our children over to those who want to do harm. Think, think about it this way. If you want to destroy the United States of America, how would you do it? Could you destroy the United States of America with a military action? No way, no way. No country d would dare. I mean, they wouldn't even band together. You only are able to break this country morally. From the inside. From the inside, Trojan horse. And where would you go if you want to strip this country of its future? It's conservative, Judeo-Christian foundational principles for the future. You go to the kids. A child that is sexually abused is corrupted at a level that I can't. The rehabilitation, do you know that we have 2% success rate at rehabilitating rescued victims? So what denotes success? Re-entry into society where that individual, to us, our measure of success in our organization is she can once again one day have a healthy relationship, intimate relationship, to be at that level of health, to trust again and love again. My sister's case is an anomaly. It took 10 years. She's a mother of two. It doesn't happen. You or do 2%, right, right. 2%. Yeah. You do good for them just to survive. No, 2% can re-enter society and function. Being a wife of two children, it's 0.0001%. My sister is an anomaly. What, what happens to the other 98%? You find them to be graphic to you, you find them in a body bag 10 years later. So that's where this life expectancy statistic you were they telling me offline can't do before life. comes in. They can't do life. The self-judgment, the self-loathing. Because a pimp, if he's, if he's any good, trains the victim that they're responsible. You deserve this. You did this. And what you're describing is, is pure evil. It's evil. And evil exists. We can't say, hey, God exists, but there's no evil. Come on. Evil is real. And so, and unfortunately, you, me, we all have the potential
to be very dark if that's the side of us we feed, right? So now we're looking at a culture. Now, who's in the White House? Yes, is that important to me? Absolutely. Am I a defender of, of, of President Trump? Sure, but it doesn't matter. Now it comes down to the individual. How do I, Yaku, and our organization help individuals, young women, to be healthy and whole and not desperate for love so that they don't fall into these traps? Because no political party or legislation can fix that. No way. I mean, we've got great laws in this country. We've got laws. I'll tell you this. I spoke in front of members of Congress in D.C. recently, and I told them this. I said, excuse my candor, but your laws are toilet paper, okay. if not enforced. Okay. If the law says 30 years and the guy gets three months, why have the law? It's what's happening. They're not enforcing it. Throw the book at him because there's no precedent for sex trafficking law. There's precedent for, precedent for tax law, okay. copyright law, but when it comes to sex trafficking, you got backroom deals, you got plea deals, you got misdemeanors. You had a judge in New York City recently sealing 40 names in a backroom deal that's on the Epstein list that, that should have gone to trial. Those guys should have been, you know, brought sure. to the American people and say, here are the names. But the plea was John Doe's, the John Doe's pleas were, it would harm our public reputation if our names got out. You were on the Lolita. You were on the island. We need to know what you saw. We need to know, did you know? Did you participate? No, we just sealed 40 names, a judge in New York. The American people will never get those 40 names. Why? Because of who they are because of what they've done, because of what they've seen and know. It's, it's look, unfortunately, I, I wish this wasn't the case, but it's real. You know, I'm still processing this idea, frankly, that you're, to, I mean, I, it, it seems obvious now that I've mentioned it, but basically this idea that most women that are ostensibly prostitutes are actually sex trafficking victims, victims. and not, and not, not actually prostitutes Jan, for that do you, reason. Do you know, Jan, yeah. to, to add to that how twisted it is, do you know that the law delineates between a 17 and an 18 year old? So our sex trafficking laws in the US say 17 and under is a minor. Yes. She's a victim. You don't need force, fraud or coercion. Irris right, irrespective. She's of a course, victim. Of course. 18 years and up, well, you got to prove force, fraud or coercion. Otherwise, she's a prostitute by law. Now, this is what's happening. The pimp goes, okay, I'm going to take the 16-year-old, right? She's protected under the law the day she turns 18. Now, remember, she's been victimized now for two years. She's completely void of, of any being, right? She turns 18, the law changes, and the law says, now you're a prostitute. Now we go in in a rescue operation. We rescue that 18 year old girl, a day after her 18th birthday, right? And now she gets a record for the rest of her life. That's the law. It's insanity. She's a victim. She's not a prostitute. No, she turned 18. Now it's free will all of a sudden. Oh, so now all of a sudden a kid that's been exploited and abused and abused needs to go, hey, sorry, pimp, I turned 18 today. I'm gonna make different decisions. It's insanity, but that's the law. How would you change this law? We need to do deep investigation on every single rescue victim, regardless of age, and trace back if there was ever any activity prior to their 18th birthday. They are a victim, period. Even if dad raped her one time, sure. she's a victim. So now you treat her as a victim. She doesn't get a record for the rest of her life. Now, now it's bad enough she's been abused. Now she can't work. She's on a sex offender list. She, right. She's got a record. You're wrecking her life. I mean, that's in, insult, Again. insult yeah. to injury, right? Yeah. Oh, but it gets worse. So I'm going on a, on a night operation. Let's just call it that, okay? With a vice unit. And vice is a special unit in law enforcement, right? In Indiana. And the head of vice, says, Yaku, you got to help us. Who do we call? OK, 
okay, wait, time out. What do you mean? You're vice. He goes, no, no, no. Our hands are tied. We can't prosecute. Why? Won't mention his name. Why? Let's say his name was James. Why James? Well, this law passed. I get the law. I read the law. The law says the following. Unless a victim, this is a 13-year-old, 14-year-old, 16-year-old girl, unless the victim self-identifies as a victim, meaning the child says, hey, officer, I'm a victim of child sex trafficking. You cannot prosecute. In 25 years of fighting this fight, I've never met a single victim that said I'm a victim. Not one, including my sister. Why? They're trained by the pimp. You did this. You deserve it. You're not a victim. You're filthy. You're... So they're not prosecuting in Indiana. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to fathom, isn't it? It's very, very disconcerting. There's major foul play. And unfortunately, the, the ticket of trade is our children. I, I'll go as far as it's our future, because they are our future. I mean, why are we doing what we're doing? What, any, you, me, it's for our kids, it's for the future, it's America. Sure. We pass it down. We've got, you know, we've got, we've got sex ed that has infiltrated 29 states that is normalizing sex with 10-year-olds, two 10-year-olds. I have the manuscript, I have the book, and it's illustrated, by the way, it's soft porn. This is being taught in 29 states. It's a desensitization of the American population to sex, sexuality, gender. Look at all these things, Jan, they're connected. How would you deconstruct a society? You would get people to agree. Yeah. Sure, remove prayer from, from schools. Sure, marriage is not a husband and a wife. It's whatever. Sure, okay, everybody should have their sexuality. Great, and yes, we're protected. But you've got to think of what it's doing to society. And now we come to a movement, a very active movement, that is looking for a sponsor for a bill in D.C. And this bill classifies and clarifies that pedophilia is a sexual orientation. This exists? 100%. The second we go there, the second a pedophile gets rights, we're done. We are tickets. <laughs> I know. Um, this is my life every day. We talked about this at the beginning, how the kind of pornography bit fits in, and you've already started talking about that, this desensitization, right? So pornography, the average age today of young men, young boys in America, their first introduction to porn, do you know what age that is? I, I, I don't want to ask you, frankly. Eight. I didn't, I didn't want to know that. Okay, so yeah. age eight, okay? Why so young? Because if you grab a guy that young, a little guy, and he's eight, and you completely thwart his view of women, right? You're gonna move him. And porn is the most, you hear me today, it's the most addictive drug on the, it's more dangerous than heroin because it doesn't stop and it progresses fast. If you're addicted to opioids, your, your hits are, are far in between. Right. Right, right? Right, right, right. Well, sex addiction, it's not. It's very frequent. It's frequent use. And the more you use it, the faster you progress down the chain. So you go from a still image as an eight-year-old boy to porn, to moving images very quickly, rapidly. By the, by the time he's 10, he's in forceful sex, forceful porn, like what, what we call hate sex. This little guy is 10 years old. His frontal lobe is not formed. He's only thinking with one side of the brain. Consequences not there. Emotion, there's nothing. You're now shaping a young mind to tell you, women are here for your pleasure. They are beneath you. You, sh you are entitled to this need of yours called sex, and it moves quickly. There's not a single pedophile in history that's not a porn addict, not one. Something interesting, there's also not a single mass shooter, mass murderer that was not addicted to porn. Is it corrupts, really? yeah, absolutely. It corrupts. There is a physiological and, and chemical reaction in the brain with porn that you don't find in any other drug. 
it literally shuts off areas of the brain to think rationally. It is almost like tunnel vision. Porn addicts will tell you, it's like I have tunnel vision. I can't think of anything else. Kids go, my grades are slipping. Oh, yeah, I can't focus. I, I, I got to get porn. It's porn. Now that young man goes and he starts dating. No, I mean, I, you, you, you can see where, the, where that goes. It's directly connected because porn creates demand for porn, right? And supply meets demand. So how is it connected to sex trafficking? This is how. You're thwarting a young man of what women is year four, number one. Secondly, you're creating a demand for more porn to be created. Do you know that a lot of your porn performers are provided to the porn industry by pimps? Okay, so this is like people doing yeah. their thing on camera. You're okay, feeding yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the, the system which creates demand. So that's why I can look at any human being and say, if you're engaged in porn, not that you know it, but you are in the supply chain of sex trafficking. 100%. There's no way to get around it. Now we're touching a touchy subject because you don't want to federally regulate porn. You can't do that because we're, we're constitutionalists and we believe in freedom. But we better start imposing pressure on the companies that provide the platforms. Every social media platform is being used to exploit children, all of them. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Backpage, which is down today, praise God, right. all of them. Tinder, you know, um, TikTok. Right. So now I'm asking TikTok, hey, what are you doing internally, corporately, to, to protect minors? Let's just do that. So the lines are drawn 17 and 18 by the law, I told you. Sure. Okay, all right, okay. Let's go 17 and under. What are you doing, Facebook, to make sure a 12-year-old a cannot access porn? You yourself know that by without looking at porn or looking for porn, yeah. just being on YouTube, yeah. it's there. Okay, yeah. YouTube, what are you doing to make sure it doesn't? What are you... like? Think about, hey, you need a, a, you need a driver's license, a security background check in order to get a, a, a license to carry, right? Why not measures by these companies to say, you need to prove that you're an adult over 18, right? Before you can gain access to porn. And there's no other way for you to gain access to porn. No, we got eight year olds on a phone. And this is not a paid for site, by the way. Yeah. It's not like you gotta pay a fee before you can actually see the sex act. It's free. Why is it free? Well, we know because it'll pull you. people in, right? Right. And then comes yeah. the subscription. Now you've got 16 year olds pawning goods out of their houses and their mom goes, I don't know what's happening. Is he using drugs? He's not using drugs. We took him to the doctor. We tested him. It's porn. He's pawning stuff to buy porn. This is, I'm just, it is a violent, do you know that 68% of porn users who are married divorce? This thing, I mean, I'm not surprised. It, it destroys, wouldn't... it corrupts, it destroys every relationship you've got. It strips you of everything. There's no such thing as a functional porn addict. You are on a, you've gone off the slope. The only way you stop is you hit bottom. And unfortunately, for too many, bottom is pedophilia. Because ultimately, after you have coerced a girlfriend to give you sex against her will, and you're training your smooth talk, and you're training your grooming tactics, then you go take sex from somebody who clearly says no, right? The end drug is pre-puberty sex. That's it. That, that is the level of evil. This is where we're at. So Yako, this is, you know, you, we've, we've just talked, I think, for a while, and this is a very, very bleak, dark picture. I mean, you're, you're doing some work, you're saying only 2% of the people that you work with. 2% of survivors can re-enter society in what we, by our measures, consider a functional way. A human being just surviving day to day, that's not a success story. So it, it, the fees involved is between three and $15,000 a month to have clinical program-based therapy for a victim. 
three to fifteen thousand dollars a month and then it needs to be 12 months and longer let me give you a stat we have over 125 long-term care facilities in the country for 18 and over. How many beds do you think we have in our country where there's licensed therapy, program-based, long-term care? Okay, not 90 days, 60 days, okay? Because you do not help a girl rehabilitate in 60 days from this. Okay, you save a girl from four years of sex trafficking, right? Do the math. Two, 3,000 men? abuse that child and remember this is forceful this is not roses and let's go on a date these kids go to the ER they break bones they, they they're forced into abortions because a, a child that's pregnant can't work the, the trauma it's trauma on trauma trauma how many beds do you think we have in our nation to rescue a girl tonight if we go rescue a girl tonight in Florida do you know that I know every bed in the country, we have no bed for her. There's 300 beds in the country. Wow. In the country. The hotel I'm staying in tonight has more beds. Be not shelters. They get raped in the shelter. I'm talking about where they are safe long term, 12 months plus, to get real deep psychological, emotional trauma care by licensed professionals. 300 beds for minors. Who's talking about this? Have you heard this in mainstream media? Uh, no? I, I, have, I have not. I have not heard about this. And go talk to the organizations that fight and they'll tell you. You get Samaritan's Women, Baltimore, Maryland. Incredible organization. The state will only allow them to have six beds per facility. The system does not help us fight this fight. It does not. And so I'm the guy, I'm the guy that'll go on stage and tell you it's aided and abetted. Because if I stand in front of a human being and say, are you for or against child sex trafficking? And the immediate answer is not against, what can I do? Then, you, then, <coughs> then you're aiding. You cannot in this issue. We can do it on the Second Amendment. We can do it on other issues. But this issue, you don't get to play see no evil, hear no evil. You don't get to say, yuck, I don't want to know. It, because if I know, it's too disturbing. You don't get to do that. It's children. So tell me, Kids. your organization, uh, tell us about organization. How can we reach you? How share, can viewers reach you? Share Together now, sharetogether.org. It's a 501c nonprofit, internally funded, no money from the government. There's no tentacles, nobody. To, we go, and we have got three different programs. One is awareness, which is what we're doing here today through you. And you're a warrior, by the way. You need to understand this. You're going to change life. This is going to change life. Epoch Times is going to change lives today because of this interview. Because some kid is going to hear, oh, it's not okay if my dad molests me? Because he tells me it's normal. Oh, it's not okay if my boyfriend forces me to have sex? That's how simple it is sometimes to save a life, right? And this is going to do it. So we bring awareness. We have curriculum that we teach into whole ISDs with doing a Irving, Texas 41 school training where we train the parents and the kids and the counselors on signs to look out for it. If you're in it, we bring, you know, remedy and rehabilitation mechanisms and help them. Then we have a rescue unit that's not in the public where we go in and we rescue. And then we help organizations that are specializing in rehabilitation because it takes a very, very particular skill set to help a young woman through this kind of trauma. We support them financially. We support them with resources. We don't physically house girls. We help place them in organizations that specialize in that. So yeah, people can reach us at sharetogethernow.org. And, and number one, learn what to look out for in their community. This is a call to action. This is my call to action. You don't have to fight Washington, D.C. Start in your home. As a dad, make sure your girls know, your boys know, what sex trafficking is, then go on your street, your neighbor's kids, then your school, make it hyper-local, police your local community. You cannot wait for the police, there's not enough of them. And they don't have the training. They don't, right? You need to take ownership as an American population, a community, and self-police your community and make sure you know what to look out for so that if you see it, you can report it. You can't wait for, you know, you know it to smack you in the face and go, wait a minute, I how can it be? 
in my community, Highland Park, Texas, home for two presidents, Highland Park, Texas, okay? Routine rescues, routine, 13, 14 a year. One of the most affluent neighborhoods in America, maybe the world. There's not a community that's immune to this. Yes, it's in the projects, rampant in the foster care system. Yes, it's in CPS. It's in Boy Scouts, in, in Girl Scouts, because it's sex. So I'm asking Americans, educate yourself on what to look out for. It's on our website. We have all the resources. We can come to your kid's school and do a training session, right? And then police your own community, hyper-local. Let us go fight Washington, D.C., okay? You make sure your kids know that there's a wolf out there. This is, this is what the wolf does. This is what he does with everything you post. And you know kids today vomit on social media. Right. I mean, it is, we can build a case in 15 minutes here in this community where we're sitting. And I'll tell you, that's the next target. By just trolling on social media and listening to what girls are saying. Putting pieces together and go, she's ready. They're masters at this. They run circles sometimes around law enforcement. So there can be a call to action. With, and then, please, dads, if you're a father, I don't care if your daughter is 50 years old. If you're a father, you've got to engage and you've got to call your daughter and say, hey, I want to, as a dad, if you've never been there, I want to now. I want to introduce you to an evil that's out there. I want you to educate yourself. I want you to know where the bear traps are in the woods so that you don't go wandering through life oblivious with your radar down and all of a sudden we need to go find you and go rescue you, right? So don't wait until it's in your community. Let's get back into a place where Americans fight for one another. Agnostic of political party, okay? I fight for the Muslim kid as hard as I fight for the Christian kid and I'm a born again believer, lover of Jesus Christ. This is not, this is children. We, we can't. When we start politicizing this thing, we're lost. And, we're lost. and, and, and here, here's an interesting fact. The sexual revolution hits the United States in the 60s. Okay? Now we're paying for it. Because historically, there's not been a single civilization on earth that morally, at a sexual level, had sexual moral decay and survived. Cannot. You will implode takes three generations. We're there right now. We're paying today for what we did in, with sex in this country in the 60s. Unfortunately now, the ones paying are our kids. Yako, really appreciate you speaking with me. Thank you. Jan, thank you.